dead. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Let me just tell you a little bit about what's happening here. We have uh, uh, the Apostle Peter, and uh, Peter of course is a Jew. And God has called him to the house of some non-Jews, Gentiles. And so whilst uh, Peter obeys the Lord and he starts to talk to these, these Gentiles about the Lord and about Jesus Christ, something incredible happens. The Holy Spirit falls upon them. Now this is really significant because this is something outside of them. This goes beyond what they actually believe. This goes beyond them having an opinion about God or having a certain belief about God. This means that something outside of them, something spiritual, something that is you wouldn't expect in this world if you didn't believe in God, something comes upon them. And that something or that someone is the Holy Spirit. And that makes all the difference, doesn't it? Because when something spiritual happens to a person, something outside of their own mind, you can no longer say, oh, well, this is just, this is just subjective, because they have made contact with God himself. And that's what we're going to be talking about this morning, and that is in uh, uh, the lives of these two young men that are here today. God has made contact with them. The Spirit of the Lord has come upon them in some measure. And, and that's why they are changed. That's why they are different. Is because they have made contact with the Spirit of God. Alright, let's just look at one of the things that the Apostle Peter says. Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, he said. Of a truth. He couldn't deny it. Because the Holy Ghost had come upon these people. He couldn't deny it. So he says, of a truth, I can see, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. That it doesn't matter. Uh, he thought, look, this is just for the children of Israel. You might come out here to share this gospel just with other Jews like myself. But now he says, I, I perceive something that actually God is no respecter of persons. That, that God is doing a work in many people's lives. Because, you know, the Bible teaches that there is only one God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But now, the Gentiles, even the non-Jews are experiencing this. They're saying, look, we've experienced God as well. And so now Peter's saying, I'm beginning to understand now that there is only one God. And that actually, he is not a respecter of persons. And not some special group of people that God is going to deal with. And it's only going to be them. But that God wants to touch the whole world. That God wants everybody to know of his existence and wants everybody to experience the love of God in their lives, whoever they are. And you know the Bible says, uh, God himself says through in, in the, the, the book of the prophet Joel 2, verse 28, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. That's the promise of God. The prophet Isaiah 44, verse 3 says, I will pour water on him that is thirsty. So sometimes in the Bible it talks about water. It's a picture of the Spirit of God. He's saying, I will pour out my water upon him who is thirsty. What he's talking about is those who are thirsty for the things of God. Those who have come to realize that actually this world, though it promises much, though it promises you a lot of fulfillment, and it seems to be like some great um, kind of playground, particularly when you, you, you reach adolescence and you just look out the world, everything it's got to offer, you think, wow, so exciting, I can go to pubs, I can go clubbing, I can do whatever it is you want to do. And you think, this is just, just so wonderful. And then maybe about two years later, you think, is, is this it? Is, was that it? Is that all the world has to offer? And, and I will answer that question for you, yes. That is all the world has to offer. That is it. It doesn't get any better than that. It doesn't get better with amassing lots of money 
You know, Jesus himself says that life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. That's not life. It isn't the life that God is promising. God is promising you spiritual life. Life from the dead. In fact, the Bible says, look, when you don't have God in your life, when you don't have the Spirit of God, you're dead. It says you're dead in your trespasses and sins. There's nothing alive, no spirituality in you. Even if you believe the right things, even if you believe in God, and, and you have some knowledge maybe of the Bible, that's not what God is promising. God is promising more than that, that you might know Him. That you might even know God. And that He might deliver you from your sins. God is no respecter of persons. It doesn't matter who you are, what you've done. God wants to make contact with everybody. 